It's Florida Daily TV, brought to you by FloridaDaily.com. For all your news on politics, business, and education, it's FloridaDaily.com. Now, here's your host, Ed Dean. Welcome to another edition of Florida Daily TV, brought to you by FloridaDaily.com. I am your host, publisher Ed Dean. We are now knocking at the door of the 2020 election. We've got so many issues out there. And I'm going to tell you this right now. A lot of the articles we've been covering, we've got big stories about how that, again, if you look at down down the path of uh, elected officials that talk about lockdown and shutdowns, we've got a big article that just came out that says the people that are in support of that here in Florida won't do well at the polls. We've got big articles coming out in the next couple of days about some of the lawsuits that are taking place, some of the big amendments. we got Republicans looking at raising school sales taxes. How do you like that one, Steve? You don't need more Democrats now, do you? So, but a couple of big issues. Some of this may sound like inside baseball, but it really is. It. Let's get to it. Blaze Angolia, who I've known for 10 years, one of the best commentators who's been on radio and TV. He's now a very well-known state representative on the west coast of Florida, around the Hernando County area, House District 35, and Steve Vancor with Vancor Jones Communications, adjunct professor at my school, FSU, go Knowles, and uh, one of the best pollsters and commentators anywhere around. So, Blaze, I'm going to throw a lot at you. I'm going to try to wind it down. And I, I know you're out there as a surrogate for the Trump campaign. So let me give you some numbers and let's see where we go with this. Okay, so I'm going to gloss over a lot of this here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Republicans have dominated absentee ballots. Not happening right now. It's about within, within about a half a million more Democrats. We've seen a record amount of early absentee ballots coming in that we've seen. I haven't seen movement like this since the days of 2008, Barack H. Obama. Let me play for you a couple of clips. Republicans way out registering Democrats uh, when it comes to the state of Florida. Here's Dana Perino from the Daily Briefing from Fox News. Here's the clip. So if, how many new registered voters do you have than you didn't have in 2016. Mm -hmm. So, and the Trump campaign has focused on this since January of 2017. And they have, they can put that to good use. The Democrats, because of coronavirus, they took a hands, they basically took their hands off the wheel in terms of registering new voters. And I think that that's why you see some nervousness amongst Democrats. We're seeing it in many states, Blaze. Let me talk to you. Okay, so the Republicans are killing it on voter registration. But does that mean you can register people to vote, but are they showing up at the polls? So give me what is going on right now. Actually, that's a, that's a really good question. So to, um, to preface is that the Democrats uh, have not been out, as you say, they have not been out boots on the ground registering voters. Republicans really never stopped. And we've really cut into their lead statewide. Back in about 2015, uh, it was about a 500,000 uh, uh, voter registration lead. It's now down to 180,000. But the key for registering any voters is to bring them out to the polls. Um, we know the metric that when you register a new voter, 85% of the time, they're going to vote for the candidate that they're registering under. But the key is get them to vote. And as of right now, uh, the data is showing us that the Democrats are doing a little bit of a better job at getting out these newly registered voters than the Republicans are. Now, that can be just because they're more motivated to vote for their candidates but it also could mean that these newly registered voters are so enthusiastic about Trump that they're not voting by mail or early, as you would think. They're waiting to cast their ballots later on in early voting or on Election Day. Time will tell to see if we're turning out these voters on the Republican side. All right, side. Steve Ancor, let me come to you. Early voting, let me just give you, I, I understand people, I mean, there just seems to be more enthusiasm for Trump than over Biden. I'm just saying when you look at the numbers out there, okay? But Steve, are people going to really, I mean, is the Trump supporter going to really wait two hours in line figuring that I look at the poll numbers, my, I read the poll numbers, I think my neighbor's going to vote for Trump. You know what, they're going to, you know, I, I, I got better things. I, I, I got to get out. I got a ball game to catch or whatever. Are they going to stay in or do you, are they going to vote? Or are they automatically going to think because they're not voting by mail, they're going to vote either early vote, which is what I did, or they're going to vote the day of, are they really going to wait around? Go ahead, well, Steve. I don't think, well, first of all, Blaze is, exa Blaze is exactly right. Um, the, the number of new registered voters as the Democrats sat back and watched things happen, the Republicans, I think, took the ball from them. And uh, now the Democrats are, you know, the margin is so much closer. When you consider how many Democrats are crossover Democrats, I'd say right now functional Republicans are higher than Democrats. But yes, they will wait. Let me tell you why. Your presumption is wrong. 
we're going to have 75 to 80% of the ballots will be cast in Florida before election day. There won't be big lines on election day. And why is that, Ed? Is because the infrastructure we have all over the state, thousands and thousands of precincts, were designed around a 70%, 65% turnout model on election day. So as you know, I represent uh, Broward County. We're estimating only 100,000 ballots will be cast on election day. There's not gonna be two, three hour lines on election day because so many people are voting by mail, so many people are voting early. And in the first three days alone of early voting, the Republicans have closed that gap by almost 100,000 votes on the, on the uh, vote by mail advantage. So. I don't think they need to wait in line two, three, four hours. I think the Republican voters, the Trump supporters are gonna be there. Let me also challenge one other presumption. I think both sides are maximally interested. Both sides are maximally engaged. The differences are marginal. The Democrats are more motivated by hate and fear of Trump. The Republicans are more motivated by hate and fear of Biden, the socialists and the Democrats. So I think that's a, that's a net even. Would you agree with that, Rep? Yeah, and just to piggyback off of that, and I think, um, um, you know, Steve's making uh, some excellent points there. But another thing that we really should be thinking about is that, you know, the Democrats, this is basically a tale of two different parties and two different um, theories on getting them to the polls this year. The Democrats went all in on vote primarily because of COVID. And Republicans are turning out on election day. And to Steve's point, I do think that the polling locations on election day are not going to be these huge uh, long lines because of the information that Steve so well can we put in the situation that we're going to put in. But this becomes, in my belief, this becomes an inherent uh, problem for the Democrats because they went all in on vote by mail. They're getting their super voters, their most reliable voters voting right. by mail. But Democrats have traditionally not gotten those ballots back at the rate that Republicans have. So if they have a 75% ballot return rate, they're gonna lose the state of Florida. Here's the latest University of North Florida poll. A couple weeks ago, Joe Biden was up by six percentage points. Here is the latest, where is that right now? UNF's latest poll of Florida voters shows Biden and Harris leading by just 1%, with 48% saying that they plan to cast their ballot for the Democrats over the 47% who are supporting President Trump and VP Mike Pence. This is actually a slip in Biden's lead from research released by the college earlier this month. That research had former VP Biden in the lead by six points. All right, Steve Van Cor, let me go with you. Six percentage points. Uh, what has dropped by that much within a matter of two weeks? Well, you know, Eric, coming out of the debate, president gets COVID, he's off the playing field. And I said on this show, when, when your candidate is off the playing field, you're just not going to do as well. He comes back, enthusiasm climbs back up. You're seeing this in Pennsylvania. You're seeing this in Ohio. You're seeing this in Iowa. You're seeing this in North Carolina. You're seeing it in Florida. You're seeing the president starting to close that gap right now and biden starting to slip it's right. happening in all the swing states and a large part of it has to do with these new but registered voters well, i want to get to that i want to get to that here's a clip from uh where is this from guys this is from msnbc on the voter registration listen to this republicans uh, seem to have made inroads in voter registration this year that could spell some problems for democrats in florida for instance Republicans registered 146,000 more voters than Democrats. It leaves Democrats in that state with their smallest overall registration lead since tracking started. All right, let me, I, I, I want to get back to Blaze in a second. Steve, I want to start with you. These numbers we hear, Biden's got a 10% uh, uh, advantage lead. But it's amazing when you still poll Democrats, they still give Trump the credit on the economy out there, whether or not if you still bind to the polls. If this is so, I'm not saying they're pumped up about Biden, but if they're so anti-Trump, then why is it that the Republicans seem to be dominating on the registration then? Op operations, opera the Democrats, uh, and I'll, I'm sure I'm going to get yelled at for saying this, the words political malpractice come into mind. Mm. They sat, as, as Blake said earlier, they sat on their hands, they just chose and, and they had almost nothing to do with the vote by mail. That was COVID. That was all the supervisors of elections were sending out literally millions of pieces of mail saying register to vote by mail, register to vote by mail. The Democrats chose not to register new voters. Republicans said, hey, we'll take that. And those voters are going to vote. When you register in that year, you vote and you tend to vote, as Blaze said, for that okay. party. But Blaze, are you here to tell me and tell this audience here that with Democrats with a four to 500,000, 500, at least by the, early, by the early absentees, are you mean to tell me that the Republicans are going to make all of that up coming out through the next several days on early voting? 
Yes, and they've already started to make up uh, some of that. You're already seeing the gap closing. What's the interesting point here, and this is when we talk about super voters, at the start of early voting, before the vote, the first vote was cast in early voting, Republicans had a 480,000 super voter advantage, those who still have over that over the Democrats who still haven't voted. After the first day of early voting, that went up to about 505,000. So the metrics becomes how much of a lead do the Democrats have going into the rest of early voting versus how many more super voters the Republicans have than the uh, Democrats have. But look, make no mistake, everything that I'm seeing right now is showing that this race is going to be close. Those old polls showing Biden up six, you know, Biden up 12, those were political malpractice to, to, uh, to borrow Steve's phrase. Anybody who thinks that the, uh, an election in Florida is not going to be close. Clearly hasn't been paying attention to Florida elections. All right. One Would of, open floor. I want to talk about the next one. I just kind of alluded to this. This is a big one. Parties don't like it. This is where the Republicans and Democrats agree on the open primary. It's a jungle primary. We even want to call it everybody gets a choice. Blaze, I'm going to start with you. I know Steve's big time on this. I mean, he comes on my radio show, uh, talks about it here on Florida Daily. It is a hot issue. It could get the 60%. Let me play for you the clip on South Florida's WPLG. Open Florida's primaries to everyone who gets to vote in the primaries right now. Only registered Democrats and registered Republicans. They're the only ones to vote in their party's primaries to pick their candidates for the general election. So that means Florida's independent voters, the NPAs, no party affiliation, they're totally shut out. Amendment 3 suggests opening the primaries, putting all the candidates on the ballot. That's the party candidates, the third party. All right, so Blaze, um, listen, I, I don't want Democrats picking Republicans. I don't want Republicans picking Democrats. But we keep hearing about it, and I wonder if this could get the 60% it needs. Everybody gets a choice in voting. That sells to a lot of people. Where does this issue go? Amendment 3. I think it goes down. Both parties are staunchly against this and for good reasons. Number one is we return our system into a system that resembles California. Um, a big reason also is that if you think uh, elections are expensive now, you know, if this passes, they'll be super expensive. They'll be twice as expenses, expensive. And then all you're going to do is you're going to empower the lobbyists and the special interests because those are the ones who are going to be able to fund these campaigns. But look, here, this is something that nobody is talking about with this is they're talking about disenfranchising NPA's independence from the primary process. Newsflash, they're disenfranchising themselves. In 2018, only 300,000 or so independents came out and voted in the primary anyway on their own. This is not gonna change anything. So we're changing this, our whole system of choosing our Republican nominees to satisfy a small number of people who are actually voting. And look, we're a closed primary state, yes, but it doesn't mean these MPAs cannot participate. They just have to choose a party pick and they can switch back. People do it all the time, but to change the whole system to satisfy a small portion of electorate to me is just ludicrous. You know, Steve, sounds easy. Just change the party, just change back. By the way, Steve, I know a lot of people that do that. Where is Blaze right or wrong in this? Well, how much time do we have? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Blaze, I want to ask you a question. You're a Republican. You're a former chair of the Republican Party. I value, I genuinely value your service. I value your party. I value how much you care to do that because that probably was not the easiest job you've ever held. Um, but would you be willing to change party registration just to cast for one day, for even one minute, your constitutionally protected right to cast a ballot. Would you go in and say, I wanna be a Democrat for this one minute, declare loyalty to the Democratic Party just to be able to cast your ballot? Would you be willing to do that? So, you, uh, so my question to you, Steve, you're talking about same day registration or are you just talking about just switching just to cast the vote? When, when you talked about people can go in and register and they can choose to register and belong to a party, that's forced association, it's against the US Constitution, but you would be forced to choose a party just to be able to vote. Yeah, I, 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 believe, I believe in the current party structure that we have right now. I think Democrats should be able to choose their Democrat nominee and Republicans should be able to choose their Republican nominee. And, but look, embeddedness amendment three also is, I think is something that gives, uh, you know, we're talking about taking away power from the individuals, but also with the same breath, we're actually giving it to the party because there's a vehicle where the party can actually put who their party 
um, who their preferred person is on the ballot. And I think that's given the party- Hold on, hold on, Steve, influence. let me ask you this. If, the, I know we haven't seen it at big races. I mean, you may saw it with Jesse Ventura's non-party affiliation, 1998 and, and Minnesota. But I mean, I've seen libertarians when, I, I know it's not sexy, they win soil oh. and conservation. Nobody falls that. No, but, no, they, they don't, don't like they the don't, rules. They, they, they don't, they don't win. They, there's not, that's they, what I'm saying, they don't, they don't win because, because they can't present a good candidate, Steve. Where, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. The parties have all kinds of rules that favor their, their, their candidates. They get taxpayers supplement their mail, taxpayers supplement their TV, taxpayers supplement their primaries. These primaries are paid for by taxpayers. Everybody on this call, on this TV show, pays taxes. But yet, if Blaze happened to live in the Democratic seat, his representative, he never gets a chance to vote for. And, and this isn't a California system. This would be a Florida system. And in fact, Jacksonville has this exact same system. And almost every single municipality in the state of Florida already has something almost identical to it. And it works extremely well. And the concept is simple. You should be able to choose what party you belong to. I respect both of you for the parties you've chosen. I hope you respect me for the same. But I shouldn't give up my constitutionally protected right to choose my senator, my representative, that's going to go to Tallahassee and represent me. I'm helping pay for these elections. Now, I do like the parties. I think the party structure is important. I think it's vital for debate. I think it's vital for our democracy. But once you pay taxes and you say those taxpayers fund those elections, those taxpayers should be able to choose the person that votes for me. It's kind of simple. And where it's in place, it works very, very well. All right, Blaze, go ahead. Go ahead, Blaze. Yeah, I just, I just fundamentally just don't agree with that. So let me use some numbers. So, so to run a pretty efficient house race, it costs about uh, $250,000, right? And, you know, we're mailing out, um, and uh, let's say it's a primary, we're mailing out only to Republicans. But if we're going to have this jungle type uh, member in three primary, that means I'm going to have to mail out uh, to MPAs, I'm going to have to mail out to Democrats also. So now my $250,000 race becomes a half a million dollar race. And where am I going to get that money? I'm going to get it from le uh, lobbyists, special interests, bigger donors who have their own agenda. So um, while this, I believe, is well intentioned, the, the fact of the matter is that only a small, uh, this only really affects a small vote um, uh, amount of people, these independents. And what we're doing is we're basically drowning out grassroots voices for in favor of uh, the richest, richest of them. I just don't think that's a great way to govern. So, so the, irony, the irony of that point is it's not happened in any of the places where this has been put in place. It doesn't happen in Florida's municipalities. And what you're saying is this inconvenient to the candidates that have to talk to more than just a narrow sliver of the electorate. The Republicans only have to talk to a very small sliver of the electorate. They don't have to talk to the people they will represent. The Democrats similarly don't have to talk to the broad swath of the electorate. Let me give you one example. Uh, a few years ago, Gary, Gary Farmer, now the um, Democratic minority leader, was facing off against a guy named Jim Walden. And you know about money in the campaigns. There were 60, six zero pieces of mail that went to voters. Certainly for the same amount of money, they could have spent the same amount and spent 30 pieces of mail. 30 pieces of mail is enough mail. It won't rise. It is nowhere. It doesn't happen in Louisiana. It didn't happen in Washington state. It didn't happen in California. It didn't happen in Nebraska. And it doesn't happen in our cities. You have to, it's inconvenient. I get it. You know, I run <laughs> campaign. You know, I get it. It's really inconvenient to talk to a lot of people. But that's the way it should well, be. Well, you know, he's got a that. point. Uh, listen, I'm not in favor, that's but I, I got to tell you, Steve's Excellent got point. a point that at least, uh, at least on the argument of sake, Blaze, that you got to have more grassroots out there. Republicans got to act. They got to win votes of Democrats. Democrats got to win votes to from it's major grassroots. I get that argument, but. Mine's more on the morality issue. I don't want Dems voting for the reps, have the primary system. And by the way, let me throw one more at you, Steve, and I love you to death. Blaze, I the think- The morality of it, I the can, morality of denying people- The morality, that's right. That's right. I said right. I agreed with you on in, some of this. In Hold on, I, they pay for it. But hear me out. But, but I'm now- I'm popcorn right now. To just, <laughs> just, to but Blaze, work. follow me. Donald Trump, with all due respect, adopted the Republican name in 2016. Bernie Sanders adopted the Democratic name. And if they would have run as an independent, I think they could have won. Some people might agree with that. So it just shows that, well, these guys can't win. Blaze, if you didn't like the way the system is, do it like what the Tea Party did. And somebody, 
come in and change the Republican system to make it more the way you like. And the same thing with the Democrats. There is party changes from with both from within. The progressives are out doing on the Democratic side. The Republicans are doing from within. Isn't that the right argument to go with? Yeah, and look, uh, I know what Steve's point is and tr- how he's trying to get to, but the, you know, those are, there are, look, I'll admit it, there are extreme candidates on both sides who are only pandering to the people who are going to elect them because they're either in a very blue uh, district or a very red district. But I will tell you that the vast majority of people like me, I'm in a very red district and I'm constantly going out and reaching out to Democrats. I'm reaching out to independents. I'm trying to win their vote. Um, If there's something I don't believe in or I do believe in, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to make my argument. But at the end of the day, I'm with you, Ed, on this. You know, I have already said this publicly. This is something like this is akin to Burger King, allowing Burger King to pick the menu items for McDonald's. And I've heard that too. Menu items for Burger King. I've heard that. I've heard that. You know, if I had a constitutional right to get a Whopper, I'd be all in on that argument. But I don't have a constitutional right to get a Whopper. I do have a constitutional right. What happens if that fries with it, Steve? (laughs) (laughs) You know, your problem is, Ed, Blaze is a really good guy. He does work across the aisle. He does represent his people very, very well. And he's got a great reputation. Can't you give me somebody else? Wow. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was agreeing with Steve. I said, I on the morality. I mean, I understand. Listen, I think the argument, I think a lot of people, I think this thing could pass. I, I don't know if it's going to, but Steve, I am just saying, Blaze, when you, when you, Steve's got a point, like Jacksonville and other cities, we're not even, whether you agree with the elected official or not, it does allow more of a choice. And voters may look at it that way, Blaze. And to Steve's case, a lot of people may go down that line because they like choice. Right. But we should not we should not reform the whole system this drastically uh, and change the basically the way we've been doing it. Um, Look, there are things that we can do. We can get rid of, you know, the last second writing candidates that close the primary. I think that does more for disenfranchising a lot of these MPA voters. Um, We can go to a runoff system similar to what Louisiana has to make sure that somebody actually has a majority of the votes before they get elected. I think there are other things that we can do, but this is just way too drastic. It changes it. It just pulls a lot more Steve, I'll give you the last word. He blazed for us up a really good point. The, the write in loophole. Florida voters already voted to have open primaries. We have this write in loophole, which is constitutional. And people, have tr- people smarter than me have tried to close it, tried to fix it. There have been lawsuits that have been tossed out. People try to amend the Constitution. The Constitution Revision Commission tried to fix it. It, it. it is a whole complicated set of reasons why you can't just fix that one tweak. I would have long ago said that's the fix let's go with that All right. let people have a choice i gotta go thanks buddy Bla- oh, before you guys go blaze and golia uh who's also a trump surrogate he's also a state representative house district 35 steve vancor vancor jones communications um we're gonna do it again before election day and let's get all the analysis predictions let's put a little money on the table let's see who's gonna win the the pot here blaze good to see you Steve Ancor, good to see you. I'm Ed Dean, Thanks, guys. publisher it. of Florida Daily. Don't forget, Florida Daily TV right here. And go visit us at floridadaily.com. Like our Facebook page. Go read us every day at floridadaily.com.